and liftoff of the 86 Progress Resupply Vehicle. We begin this week on a launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. There, an uncrewed Russian Progress 86 cargo ship successfully launched on a resupply mission to the International Space Station. Progress 86 made its approach with the ISS two days later when it delivered nearly three tons of food, fuel, and supplies to the orbiting outpost. The delivery came just days before NASA celebrated the 25th anniversary of the International Space Station. What was something that you couldn't be taught on Earth, that you had to get in orbit and had to learn it by yourselves? Well, weightlessness, you know, that is something that is truly unique up here. There is uh, unfortunately no way to train weightlessness uh, on Earth. We can get a taste of it on a parabolic flight, but it's just not the same as actually living and working in weightlessness up here. And it's uh, not just fun, but it's also very challenging. It was November 20, 1998, when Russia launched a proton rocket carrying the Russian-built, U.S.-financed Zarya navigation module. Meaning dawn or sunrise, Zarya would bring together the U.S., Russia, Europe, Japan, and Canada in what's been called the most expensive home ever built. How do you find life on ISS? There are groups of people, teams of people all over the world who are figuring out every aspect of these missions, um, everything from our food and clothes to the science research that we'll be doing on board. Um, they're also the ones who are operating space station. Believe it or not, uh, even though we're on board, we don't actually fly space station. Um, that's flown by the teams of flight controllers and mission control centers in Houston and Russia and elsewhere on the planet. Meanwhile, in a video released by the Iranian Defense Ministry and which VOA cannot independently verify, Iran says it has sent a capsule carrying animals into orbit. The Islamic Republic also says it plans to launch human missions in coming years. Also this week, the South Korean Defense Ministry says it successfully placed a small Earth observation satellite into orbit. The launch was a part of South Korea's surveillance network against its neighbor to the north. In the 50,000 years of human history, just 12 of us have traveled from our Earth to walk on another celestial body. Finally this week, it is none other than the actor affectionately known as America's Dad, Tom Hanks, narrating and executive producing an immersive experience of the first moon landings from 1969 to 1972. All four walls of the London-based show are screens, bringing NASA's Apollo missions to life during the 50-minute film. Called The Moonwalkers, the show includes interviews with the crew of Artemis II scheduled for a lunar flyby late next year. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.